All right. And we are live here from... Paradise. Yeah, that, let's hear some music now. Welcome, everybody, to uh, join us here at... Uh, well, presently it's live from America's Promise Ministries. So Those you get DVDs and CDs, you'll get them uh, in a week or so. We're actually getting mostly caught up, and most of you are getting uh, these... Um, uh, much quicker now, and it's much more updated information. I want to begin, now this will be part seven of uh, Israel, Stand in the Faith. I want to begin by giving a little plug for our next newsletter coming up. So I'm going to read a little bit of an article I uh, have started. Uh, just a little bit, I guess this would be a teaser for those of you. And it's dealing with the spiritual Israel. I thought maybe this was over, but it's not over. And the um, people, certain one in particular that's writing about this and continues to write about it very fluently. And uh, some people are sending me some stuff on it. I'm not paying attention to his stuff anymore for a number of reasons and uh, uh, although I would like to if it was if it was good and and uh, biblically right on I would love to but uh, I'm just at the point now for a number of things and uh, his predictions that have gone on over the year that I again I could list uh, probably well over a hundred of them that he's gotten into and they haven't come to pass and but the people still keep getting all uh googly eyed over it you know because oh there's these numbers and we take these numbers and when there's a symbolism here and and we had this um and uh, we had this prayer convention this prayer convention and we all prayed about it and the holy spirit showed us this and uh, and uh, or we came together and we we prayed against this 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 demon or we prayed against this devil evil spirit that was coming against our nation in the form of a hurricane, and we prayed get, prayed away that hurricane and we did this and we did that you know, and some of you may be said that is blasphemous what you're saying there, you shouldn't be saying that that was he's saving our life Pastor Barley he he and his Prayer convention, pray against these things, and you're a non-believer in that. Yeah, I am. Well, how dare you do... Listen, if you want to be blind to it, you go right ahead. I'm not saying everything that's unspiritual and praying against things is wrong. That's not what I'm saying at all. Don't read more into it. But I'm telling you, a lot of this stuff is absolute baloney. And uh, in this situation, his... Topic, I'm not saying all of his topics are, but in this particular topic, his spiritual Israel is dangerous. It's unbiblical. And I would like to not just forget it, uh, that, that it's not even a problem, not an issue, and go on. But you know, the more I've been watching this over a long period of time, because this has been going on for quite a while, and I've been silent for a long, long time. And for the at the beginning, I was like, Wow, I'm reading this stuff that he's saying here. Or wow, I've gone to the same conference he has. We've both spoken. And I listened to what he said. And I said, I'm telling my wife, I said, is it me or is this guy really preaching spiritual Israel here? Surely he could not be preaching spiritual Israel. Replacement Israel theology. There's another term, though, so hang with me, that he's using now. That I'm going to inject in this article. And... My wife's saying, well, it sure sounds like it to me. I, I mean, you, you have ears too, and I think you're right. Other people have been coming to us and writing us for a long period of time, and I've been making excuses for him. And I say, no, no, he's not teaching that. He, he really means this and, and stuff. And um, oh, it, it's come to a head. It's, it came to a head really at this past conference in Dallas. And uh, he got up, like I say, and he spoke on something totally different. It was on numbers and it had nothing to do with spiritual Israel. And he was getting to his numbers things and, and predictions and, and his prayer campaign and stuff like that. And, you know, okay. And then I got up and I talked and I really hit the Israel message. 
because I felt the Holy Spirit, not, not because of him or anything. I felt like the Holy Spirit was showing me, you know, people are, they're not hearing enough of this truth and they don't have a foundation to stand on because they're not, it's not being taught anymore in many cases. So I said, I'm going to hammer the Israel message in my first talk. So I did. Well, apparently it upset him. So he got up on his next talk and he started teaching that, well, I want us to turn our Bibles to Leviticus and I want to show you where basically we're all the same. There's one law for Israel. And listen to what it says here in Leviticus. And there's one law for the stranger, you see, and therefore we're all equal. So he read another verse on that, another verse on that. And um, uh, so I wasn't changing my talk. My next talk was the same one that was going to be, and I continued on with the Israel message. He gets up again and starts hammer, uh, and, and kept trying to counteract me on that, you know. And, um, well, all I'm saying is there's a problem here. It's real. And it wouldn't concern me so much except for he's, teach, he's preaching to uh, our people. And some of our people are not paying attention, and they're getting sucked into this subtly. So please don't get sucked in. I'm not saying that to be mean or vindictive or glorify myself or uplift what but I'm saying it. If you're confused, then get unconfused. Start studying the issues. Read, read what he has to say. That's fine with me. Read what he has to say, but also pay attention to what I'm saying, and, 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 and listen to solid Israel teachers out there. And find out which side you're on. That's all i got to tell you, because this is dangerous stuff. All right. Uh, so I'm going to read a little bit of this newsletter as a teaser that I'm going to be coming out with. I want you to read every drop of it, though, when it comes out this next month. Here's what I've titled it. I may change the title, but here's what I've titled it. Legal Israel equals spiritual Israel, part one. Note, I say at the beginning, please read this important Bible study. It is a matter of vital biblical importance. The study is in no way meant to promote a spirit of bondage, but for true Israel to come out of the bondage of her present spiritual Israel blindness. Isaiah 41, verses 8 and 9 say, quote, But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. The seed, and I want to emphasize seed, doesn't say legal. You will notice at the beginning I said legal Israel equals spiritual Israel. Why am I saying that? Obviously I'm not reading from my newsletter right now, but I'm trying to explain something. It's because that's his new term that he's come up with. And he uses it in a numerous portions of his writing now. Legal Israel. And he says over and over in his writings, Israel is a legal term. And he'll quote from God's law. And people will read that and say, Oh, yeah, oh, I'm with you. Be careful. All right. And so his emphasis is, and, and, and God's word says there, Seed, the seed of Abraham, my friend. He doesn't say legal Israel. He doesn't say, God Almighty does not say spiritual Israel. He says a seed, the stock, the lineage, genealogy of Israel through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And may I say it again, the scriptures say, and Isaac shall thy seed be called. For, verse 9, for whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee, from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my, my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Over and over, God Almighty reassures Israel, I have not cast thee away. That covenant that he made with Abraham was his word to Abraham. May, may I stress again? He did not ask Abraham, do you agree with this? Is it okay with you? Do you agree? Well, let's make a covenant together. Now, at Mount Sinai, with the children of Israel, they did. he did that. 
but his eternal word that he gave to Abraham, he has not broken. It wasn't conditioned upon Abraham. It wasn't conditioned upon Israel. It's God's word. God's not a liar. God doesn't back down from his word. And the biggest emphasis and way I can stress this is to go and read Hebrews 8, verses 8 through 10. The new covenant does not deny the old covenant. It affirms. It affirms it. All right, I will continue here. Please note, this, quote, seed of Abraham is not a legal identification of who Israel is, but a racial genealogical identification. I prefer not not to attack the messenger, but only that portion of his message that I strongly disagree with, so I will not throw out names or make this personal. However, in the writings of a particular, quote, spiritual Israel minister about who an Israelite is, he wrote the following, quote, The divine purpose was to, gen to gentilize Israel. By God divorcing Israel, she became like all other nations in the sense that she was not married to God. But because of the promises given in Hosea and other places, God bound himself to remarry and regather Israel into his house. Matthew 13.44 teaches, however, that he was to do this by purchasing the entire field. Unfortunately, this means that the entire field, notice what he says here, this means that the entire field, which is the world, is it not? Became Israel. Not by physical genealogy, he says, but by obtaining legal citizenship into the kingdom of God, end of quote. But if you don't know the Israel message and you're not really paying attention, you're going to read that. He'll get you sucked in by going, he was going along Israel truth, Israel historical and biblical perspective for a few lines there. Then he slips in this thing and it's just totally not biblical, not true. Corrupts it, and, but there, if you're not paying attention, you've already, he's already got you locked into believing him following him because he uses biblical truth at the beginning. He does this throughout his friends, and I could list dozens and dozens of it, those situations. I list a few in this article. Beware. But did you see that? Let me read that last part again. Not by physical genealogy, but by obtaining legal citizenship in the kingdom of God. They all become, the entire field, he says, now becomes... Israel. Uh, liar. Liar. Yeah. I mean, uh, you, I'm sorry. He's not stupid. I, nobody will accuse this individual of being stupid. He's lying here. Well, that's an awfully strong word. All right, listen. I, I can prove it to you. But if you want to be so gullible and you want to be so, well, it's not loving to say that. Go get your head out of the sand. That's all I got to tell you. You're not going to listen to me anyway. You're going to think I'm a mean, ruthless hate monger and that he's so loving and he wouldn't lie to us. And he's, he's so much more spiritual than you. And it's not a competition, but I'm telling you, we need to, this is serious stuff. And I've been pretending again for a long time. We cannot start be pretending anymore on this stuff. It is really, it has some serious biblical, and I'll dare say racial implications that we need to be on guard against. I'm going to read on for a little bit more here. In an assortment of his writings, he emphasizes that Israel really cannot and should not be identified by physical genealogy, but by his interpretation of, quote, legal citizenship. Quite frankly, this is utter nonsense. But this twisted gospel must be challenged and exposed as most, assur uh, most assuredly our silence is giving consent to this false teaching. <clears throat> yes, the divine purpose, as he states, 
was to Gentilize Israel. Now let me just stop there. Really? Yeah, because he did Gentilize Israel. He did divorce them, the northern ten tribe house of Israel, for their sin, and they became Gentilized. However, I go on to say, the divine purpose was not to leave the northern house of Israel Gentilized. The divine purpose was to bring both the northern house of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah back together on the bonds of a new covenant, not to leave them Gentilized. And then I quote, and I won't go on to read that, Hebrews 8, verses 8 through 10, which makes it very clear and specifically states that this new covenant is to the southern kingdom of Judah and the northern house of Israel. It's All right. After quoting those verses, I say this. Please note that the scriptures do not say, For this new covenant I will make with Israel, Judah, and the non-Israelite strangers, so all can obtain legal citizenship. <laughs> that is funny, and I hear you laughing, and it is kind of laughable, but it's a serious thing because that's exactly what he wants his, sorry, gullible readers to believe. And you're gullible if you're just getting sucked in by this lie. The misguided idea being that we can all become is legal Israelites. This particular spiritual Israel minister goes on to say, quote, The way into God's kingdom is the same for all people. Now you hear that, oh yeah, that's, wow. That is, that's, the real, that's the real new covenant there, Pastor. No, it's not. Anyway, he says again, quote, the way into God's kingdom is the same for all people, for there, he says, is no partiality with God. End of quote in what he says. And then he quotes, and he has a scripture verse, nine, Romans 2, verse 11, which does say, there's no, Paul says there's no partiality with God. And again, people say, well, see, there it is, Pastor. And he, how can you argue against what this man is saying? It is so, again, so highly spiritual. You just got to get in there and see, have your eyes open to it and have no these racial barriers you keep bringing up or whatever they're going to say. All right. To which, again, I, I'm going on to quote the new, what I'm saying in the newsletter. To which some of his readers would think, oh, how loving and spiritual, yes. There shouldn't be any, quote, partiality. And if there is no partiality with God, then by golly, there shouldn't be any in our theology either. So we should glory in God's racial variety and stand against anyone who looks down on multicultural Christianity. I go on to say, that's what they're going to say, well, I don't care how good or loving something may sound or appear. A loving falsity is still a lie. One short passage of Scripture should add corrective thinking to that partiality point that minister was making. And I quote Romans 9, verses 13 through 22. You will need to read all those over. But I'm just going to read the first verse of that. And this is what it says. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. There's much more to that. You need to read it. But right there, no partiality with God. I'm not saying what Paul said is wrong. I'm saying his interpretation of what Paul is saying is wrong, and he's using it to mislead his people to prove a falsity. So, um, serious stuff. All right. Let's move on with our study now. I know I took some time out of it, but that's still good Bible study in, uh, material. Some people may not even get my newsletter. Some people, that may be the only thing they hear right at this point. But I pray it'll be used to help people get their eyes open. All right. I believe Jesus will do that for his people. Let me say this on now because we're into uh, Israel, stand in the faith. Last time we were talking about the terrors, I was making this point that when the terrors raise their head biblically, and it's talking about them, and they do, they, they're at the end time, scriptures speak about the terrors raising their head. 
And you would be able to see them clearly in the end time to identify who they are. Today, that's exactly what is happening. They're not quiet. They're not trying to hide who they are. They are boastfully, proudfully, in a fleshly way, raising their head, feeling who's going to stand in our way and who's going to do anything about it. We have the power. We have the political power. We have the police force. We have most, if not all, the world control in our hand right now. We have just a few little other things to take care of here, and it's over. We're, we're going to be ruling. We're going to be the next world order, new world order. No. Scriptures, I believe, are quite clear. The next world ruling, dominating kingdom was going to be the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm scared it doesn't look like that. Look at all the money. Look at all the power. Look at all the control. Oh. Don't live in fear. Trust the scriptures. Believe the scriptures. Yes, they have a tremendous amount of control right now. But we need to get, we need to get our, our, our um, head out of their particular bucket of sand that they want us to stick it in. Let's get our head, let's get our heads up, hold them up high. See, a Gideon company of people hold their head up high. The true biblical called out remnant, those 7,000, the scriptures say, who have not bowed their knee to Baal, stick your heads up high, scripturally and biblically for Christ our King. We're on His army. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, uh, it's like uh, Colonel Moore used the example of that black baseball player, and they're losing really bad, bad, and he says, wow, it's all over for you. He said, no, sir, this is only the first inning. We haven't come to bat yet. <laughs> and though, don't, don't they say that on the kingdom? You know, people get their, uh, oh, the Christians have had their day, and they've blown it. No, Christians have not had, the, I mean, the kingdom has not had its day yet. Meaning, we haven't lived the kingdom life. We haven't had kingdom, true biblical kingdom living yet. Have we had it in part? In and, 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 uh, certain ways, yes, we have. At the beginning of our nation was a good example of that. We came pretty close there for a short period of time. And I still say and believe we're living off the residuals of what they did. It was so powerful and so strong and put such fear in the terrors. They don't want to see us gaining power again. They're doing everything they can to keep us out of power. They don't want to see the true kingdom emerge. If you could see that, you would see blessings flow. Not only for God's people Israel, but for all people. Because we'd have right biblical order, right biblical understanding, and all eventually would come to know Him from the least to the greatest, and there would be blessing in that biblical kingdom knowledge. And there would be kingdom order. So, um, when the terrors raise their head, though, it's a sign of something. You know what it's a sign of? It's a sign of that we're in the end times and that their days are numbered. Amen. Hallelujah for that. So uh, it's also going to be a time that's going to require great faith. You know, let's turn to, um, read this, First, uh, Luke, Luke 1, 67. Oops, I went past Luke chapter 1. All righty, Luke chapter 1, verse 67. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. All right. For he, what a, what a racist, unhateful thing to say, of course. I have to point that out. I mean, he, he couldn't have been very spiritually minded at all because he should, he should have, you know, uh, as this one spiritual marriage, he emphasized that the new covenant is for all now. And uh, yeah, really? Well, you're reading a different Bible than me, that's all i got to say. 
Now, I'm talking about the new covenant, and which is the old covenant. I'm not saying there isn't salvation for all people. There, I mean, all I'm telling you, though, is let's get the right biblical perspective on this. Let's say the right biblical things, not because the world would like it, or we would like it, or a special group would like it, because it's God's Word. And when we get it in order, boy, we're going to start having light and order and blessings flow. So anyway, for he has visited and redeemed his people. What does the term redemption apply to? It applies to Israel. Because the people who were, in a sense, deemed in the first place under the Old Covenant are the same people he has come to redeem under the New Covenant. Comprende? Okay, good. And, and I'm not talking about salvation. Two different terms here and applications. But there is a chain of command. There is a category that is given in God's Word. And by the way, there's even a chain and a category among Israel too. There's a hierarchy. There's overcomers. There's, gonna, you know, so uh, God's law has lots of examples of that. And uh, even as I point out about slavery, I will add this in this article you need to read again that I only read a small portion of. I get into the slavery. I get into immigration. I get into the status of the foreigners in Israel. And even among Israel, where the scriptures talk about slavery, Israelites were also put in slavery. If you, didn't, if you had a debt... Uh, and I'm not talking about usury being charged, but there were legitimate biblical debts. If you didn't pay them, you could be sold into bondage or slavery for a period of years, not forever, but for a, until the, uh, a year of release, the sabbatical year of release was accomplished, or until the year of jubilee came about, and you were released. It wasn't, went, didn't go on and on, but you were put in a state, in a, in a position of slavery until that happened or the debt was paid. Okay, so it wasn't just for non-Israelites as well. And so there were statuses even for Israelites that were not necessarily comfortable. All right. Uh, and hath raised up a horn of salvation to thee, unto uh, us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which, he, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Wow. Now that's a serious promise. He has kept that for his people Israel, his called out. But that also applies the scripture verse, many are called, few are chosen. There's a blessing in the calling, and I would suggest we pay attention to that calling. And I think we are here today because we're paying attention to that. Not that we're perfect, not that we walk on water, but we're paying attention to that calling. And we want to be a part of that calling. To perform the mercies, the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember His, think about it, to remember His holy covenant. With who? With Israel. Verse 73, the oath which he sware unto uh, to our father Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant. He's always remembered his word and kept his word to Israel. Can I get an amen on that one? Amen. amen. Thank you. At the end of that chapter, Dave, because we're talking about Jesus, says he appeared publicly to Israel. Yeah, he appeared publicly to Israel. Yes. And until the days of, in verse 80, to the days showing unto all Israel. Unto Israel. Yeah, there are just lots of scripture verses on it. People will pay attention. Now, if you want to be, and I, by the way, in this news, I get into lots of these scripture verses that people use to spiritual Israelize. And you're going to see, whoa, <laughs> there's quite an Israel message there that I didn't see before, people are going to say. All right. Um, I want us to uh, move ahead to. Another verse, which we have read many times, and that's in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 21, verse 43. 
Matthew chapter 21, verse 43. Um, I do want to pay uh, uh, um, say that I apologized last week for not getting in any scripture verses. So I did quote some to you, but I didn't have let's turn our Bible type stuff and, and read these over. I, sometimes it gets that way where I have to do some explaining. I have to maybe do some house cleaning too, or whatever we could call it. So uh, I, I try to keep that to a minimum. I try to keep us in the Word as much as possible. So just please love me and pray for me and forgive me if I don't make the scripture, uh, the sermons or the messages as uh, scriptural and load them in as much as I maybe should be from time to time. I'm a work in progress. All right. Now, uh, this is something that um, uh, when, we're, when we're talking about terrors raising up in Israel, and uh, as we're reading earlier, this is always an indication of something. It's an indication that our nation has transferred its trust from the Christian faith. And what are they doing? They, they are um, bypassing the Word of God, and they're using religious emotionalism and worldly appeal to blend it in with the Christian gospel. And you know what God's Word identifies that as, quite seriously? Idolatry. We are practicing an Christian idolatry today. It's not true biblical Christianity. As a matter of fact, Judeo-Christianity is Christian idolatry. Oh, no, it isn't. Yeah, it is. Well, I have some of my children go to a Judeo-Christian church. You say my children are idolatrous. You know, hey, let me put it on this level for you. I don't leave my family out of this. Some of my family who have married into a woman or whatever, uh, if there's a girl married into a man, that may be, because I don't want to, both sexes do it, and they'll marry someone who is a Judeo-Christian. Well, uh, they're good people, Dad, you know, and, and uh, they, they go to a Baptist church, or they're good, good Catholics, and they'll go to a Catholic church. Uh, I really have a problem with a lot of Catholic stuff, let me tell you. Thank God none of my family is into the Catholic Church, but still, uh, oh, oh the, the Baptists are so much better. Or this, no, they're not really. If you understood, you look at it with a ma biblical magnifying glass, you say, oh, wow. So I'm not leaving my own family out of this. Well, are you doing that to insult your family? No, I'm kind of doing it to kind of calm me down and let you know. Uh, Pastor Barley is not perfect, and it's not a matter of Pastor Barley being perfect. But it's a matter of the Scriptures warning us and telling us, and God's got a calling. For some reason, for your children that are you're watching this, or your grandchildren, I don't know who, or even mine, some of, my, uh, some of them get off track. I pray for them. Not that they're going to hell or anything, but I do want them to be on the, have the right biblical understanding. And some of them get a little weak because their mate puts pressure on them. If you're not aware of this, that uh, if you don't go to my church, if you don't leave that church or you don't go to this other church where we can raise our children where, I don't know, whatever excuse they're going to have because there's more social programs, because there's whatever going on out there. Enter entertainment. I just don't want to put it on that, that level or that basis, but uh, whatever excuse they want to use, I couldn't do it, folks. I just could not do it. I, if, I, I, boy, I, uh, there's just so much I could say on that right now. I don't want to get too far off track, but am I kind of hitting some mess some buttons here with some of you? And you understand what I'm saying? It's just... Uh, you know, it, 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 maybe this is a bad example, but I don't think it is. Remember Deliah and Samson? All these warnings to Samson about what this other pagan woman will do to you, and it happened. Well, that's an extreme example. You put my, uh, our, my children, my grandchildren. 
Two fits words, all I'm going to say. God's told us not to be unequally yoked together, and that includes not only racially, that includes spiritually as well. I have said, the, I have said about my parents, one thing I do like about what they taught me and appreciate what they taught me, and my grandparents did the same thing, is that marry someone of your own faith. Now, my parents never really stressed marrying racially within your own kind that much. They did a few. My grandparents did all the time to me. I've told you all the story of grandma going over to my grandma's house. I love to go over to grandma's house, and she would read the Bible to me. And uh, I remember she had this big pillow, and she'd put up in the bed for me, and she'd be sitting over there, and my brother and I and my cousins, and we... Oftentimes, but sometimes just me and grandma, they, they'd be off doing something else. But I don't want to hear the Bible. And one time she grabbed my ear and she says, now Dave, she didn't hurt me or anything. She just said, now Dave, I want you to promise me you will not marry outside of your race. I want you to promise me, Dave. She stressed that to me. And I says, I won't, grandma. I won't. Now I was a young man and I didn't really totally understand it all, but... I promised her I've never forgotten that. Isn't that strange that I would never, because she did something by grabbing my ear and getting my attention. You know, some, thing, some things we do physically to get our attention, it's like writing, we were talking earlier, my wife was talking about writing on a chalkboard when you're in George, when you get in trouble in school. I remember that. I had to do that an awful lot, by the way, when I was in school. I, I was a bad boy in many ways. And... Uh, it was like when I, I remember in, in high school, oh, how different the days were compared to now. And, and when I was in high school, way back when, we actually had loaded, um, we actually had guns and we actually had a firing range and we shot at a firing range on campus and I was in the ROTC at the time. Of course, the idea was to use ROTC to get you all rah, rah, boom, to go into in the war, you know, and, and Vietnam and stuff like that. Well, um, but they, I, I remember uh, getting in trouble many times because there would be this punk idiot up there uh, shooting his mouth off. They loved this. You could just see the people that wanted to be government bureaucrats or be a police officer or something like that. And they loved to have that authority. You know, and they would put rank us or, or something like this. The guy was like, Sergeant Barley, I want you to raise your hands and I want you to hold them there for 10 minutes. What does that mean? That means you fold your hand, you're, you, you're sitting in your chair, you had your, rot, uh, your, um, your uh, ROTC uniform on, and you have to fold your hands like this and sit there. Sit there and sit there. Well, for several minutes, hey, it's no big deal. And you have, you're determined, I'm not going to see this punk up there, see me, winch, because he's about the same age you are. He may have been a grade or older than you, but it doesn't matter. He's, so anyway, I wasn't going to give in, but I tell you, after 15 minutes or so of sitting there like this, you're just kind of, you're really looking at your watch or looking at it on the wall and hoping and praying you can take your arms down. But you're not going to give him the satisfaction of letting him know you're hurting. So um, anyway, how different school is today? I'm not sure why I brought that up with ROTC, but I'm sure I had a good reason. Maybe you'll remember the reason. <laughs> But where we are, we're into idolatry, folks, today. Heavily into idolatry on so many levels and categories. If I went through them all, it would alarm you. You can do it yourself. Just sit back and think. Are we into idolatry in this area? Yeah, in a lot of different areas. And, um, t and, and um, uh, you know, I'm, well, I was talking about racially, what happens Think about in God's word over and over, he tells us, don't, don't marry these people because they'll, you, um, your children will grow up to hate me. They'll start worshiping other gods, etc., etc. He warns us of this. And so when your children go and marry a, a nice Baptist girl or a nice non-denominational Christian, you know, or whatever you want to call them out there, and they... They put pressure on you. Everything's probably good for a while. And after a while, and you're not with the family all the time, this woman or this guy nags your, your, your son or they'll nag your daughter. 
well, I really think we need to go somewhere else. We need to have our children exposed to other things. And uh, I'm really not happy with this. And well, you know how it goes. And just nag, nag, nag until they wear your son or daughter down or grandchildren down. And you say, okay, well, you know, it's, it's Christian. I'll go there. I don't know why you're bringing this up, Pat. Because it's a problem. And if I keep quiet on it, some of you... Get, some of you need to be told this stuff. Is it okay? We get a little house clean here. You need to be told this stuff because this is real. I never stopped to think about it. When my children got married, I thought, oh, how wonderful. You know, well, at least thank God they're marrying somebody of their own race, which is good. Which is good. I'm not bad at all. Thank God for that. But I never stopped to think about all the other little problems that might emerge from that. And I'm saying that because some of you out there, I've heard from you. You call me on the phone with tears in your eyes about what's going on in your family, and I sympathize with you, but you know what? God's Word has warned us of this, and you can't hold yourself responsible for that. I'm sorry, but your children are grown. They're responsible. Pray for them. I'm not saying they're going to hell. Don't you misinterpret what I'm saying. It's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying there's going to be natural and even spiritual problems arise from this. Okay, and we're getting some amens in the audience here, so that's good. Let me just show, share with you. Oh, no, let me, let me um, read this one here. And uh, where are we at in? Matthew uh, 21, verse 43. Therefore say I unto you that the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bring the forth the fruits thereof. You may think, well, what a nice verse and everything. There are some deep spiritual biblical principles involved in this. And what I'm telling you here. Yeah, on a national scale, but on a family scale, an individual scale as well. You got it? And we need to pay the fruit. We need to have the fruit. Um, if you're going along just to get along, but the head knowledge is not there, the spiritual understanding is not there, the righteous results that, it, that should be the, the product or the fruit of that will not be there. We need to have that true, biblical, spiritual fruit of the kingdom. And if not, you're not going to last. You can only fake it so long. You can only go along to get along and, and fool people for so long. But if you're not really, you don't really have that foundation, you won't last. And you, you may wander away like a prodigal son and go to some of the church or something like that, but you'll just stay right there if you don't have the right the true, right, biblical foundation and understanding. If your foundation and understanding, like let's just say with our, quote, movement here, is watching others and go along to get along to a large degree, but you have a surface understanding and maybe some little bit of spiritual, but it's not really grounded, you, you will be sucked away. You will be led away. But if you have the right foundation, you go somewhere else like a prodigal son, the right senses will come to you eventually. I don't know when, but it came to him, did it not? It'll come to you at some time. You'll say, I've had enough of this. I've had enough of this uh, Judeo-Christian dung or whatever's going on here. And I put up with it. I put up with it. And I'm sick of this. They are, what? It's wrong, wrong, wrong. I'm going back to the truth. I'm going back to our Heavenly Father and get the truth. And that's what we should all be in prayer of. George, I can tell you, you want to make a comment real bad. Go ahead real quick. Well, I think that some of them are making the excuse of going to the Jordanian Going to the, churches. yeah, some are making the excuse. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. They want to be there to help them bring the They want to be there to, oh, and they will use that as an excuse. And maybe, perhaps, they do start out with those good intentions or anything like that. But then they start developing uh, friendships. They start developing business ties with people. And... And the, the church asks them to start teaching Sunday school. The church asks them to get involved in this. Would you go on the camping trip and be a leader for our kids? Would you take them on this thing? Would you uh, come forward in church and we want you involved in this program? And all of a sudden, hey, I'm somebody. Uh, this, this church loves me. I'm getting more love in this church. And so, oh, I don't know what it is, but they'll get locked in. So... Uh, the reason I'm saying this is because in most of you, you older folks like us, we, you've been there, you've done that. I came out of the Judeo-Christian church. I know what they do. 
And I, for instance, in my kids, they don't. Oh, I took them when they were younger, a once in a while, to one just kind of give them a little touch of it. And I would say, I would use that as a teaching. You see what you heard and saw here in this church? And what we do and what they're doing. And I think a lot of them still, they, they didn't really understand what dad and mom were trying to do. And, but again, when they get married, it's a whole new ball game. Why do you keep bringing that? Because I'm trying to warn you. If you don't want to listen to me and you know you get your kids run off and get married to some Judeo-Christian later on, and uh, you, oh, how nice. And, and I'm not saying you can stop it. That's not what I'm trying to do. But go into it with both eyes open and be prepared to be disappointed for a while. In fact, be prepared to be disappointed if they don't even leave your faith and stand it, because that's what gets a little disappointed from time to time. But we do have, this needs to be taught. It needs to be understood. Bring Just call. To the <laughs> well, bring your, well, I, that's true. But I've had my children go to all the conferences. And not all my children have had problems there. But I've just noticed that, uh, that there, there's a problem there. And I know some of you are experiencing it too, again. So, um, I, Yeah. But my, I came out of the Judeo-Christian church. I'm talking about me right now. I'm not picking on anybody else. I came out of it. I know what it's all about. I don't want to go back to it. Not because I think we're perfect and we have all the solutions, all, but I, we have vital, important biblical truth that I would trade. I treasure this Israel truth if it's properly taught. Yes, another comment. I know the truth. Why do you want to keep going back to the Once lies? you know the truth, why do you want to keep going back? I know. And that's the problem. They're just kind of, you know, oh, I've heard this before. And they're just kind of, they don't really have the foundation like you may think. We go along thinking, well, they got it. Surely they've got it. But they don't. Yeah. And they have nothing to compare it with from being in the Judeo. I had plenty to compare it with. They don't. And they're like, and then so they go out here, it's like, we're the, we're the prodigal son. Wow, look at all the fun in the world. L look at all this glorious, fun activity they have in the world. And then all, they get locked into it, locked, and all of a sudden, they're, they're, all of it's gone, taken away from them, and they're down. That's what it's going to take. They're going to have to come to their knees before they wake up. I'm sorry, but that's what I pray. Okay, Judges, chapter 2. Uh, yeah, Judges, chapter 2, and verse 18. These are, these are very revealing here. These are the Lord's judges we're going to be reading about here at the beginning. Verse 18. Uh, and when the Lord raised them up judges. So obviously it's the Lord's judges. He's raised them up, right? By the way, I hate injecting this, but even when they're non-spiritual, non-biblical, heathen judges, He's raised them up too for a, for a purpose. Yes. Build the heat. Alright. So, But these are good judges. Uh, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. He heard their prayers. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn ways. Israel next. Stiff-necked, hard-hearted, rebellious people. Right? And then they, well, why are things going bad? And why, look what's happening to our nation. You know, if you just, what's that? Oh, yeah, but, yeah, like, like Richard said, but they're very religious. You know, he's tongue-in-cheek thing there. Exactly. Uh, all right. Very idolatrous, may I add. All right. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. Is the anger of the Lord hot against Israel today? Yeah. Uh, and he said, saith, 
Because of this people hath transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice, I will not henceforth drive them drive out any more before them the nations which Joshua left when he died. That through them I may prove Israel. Why are these aliens, a lot of these aliens and strangers among Israel today? That I, God says that I may, that through them, I'm going to use these strangers, these idolatrous people that have come in, and again, I want to stress, read my next year, because I really get into this and explain some real details for you. That I may prove Israel, okay, whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did it or not. Pretty good verses there, right? And um, why are we having... This problem. You see, a lot of people today don't recognize how idolatrous we really are. Because what they are looking for on a surface level is people see idols all over our nation and people stopping and bowing down to them. And, uh, and like we would have, well, we would see almost in their minds, we would see these great temples to Zeus and Aphrodite, and like the Romans and the Greeks did. That's kind of what they're expecting type of stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not recognizing that the idolatry is the, is the false religious teachings that are brought in by these alien people from these other nations into our nation. By the way, our own people as well. But God warned Israel, if you allow these people in, this is going to happen. Your, your sons and your daughters are going to start marrying them. Idolatry is going to grow in the nation. Paganism is going to increase. You're going to start paying less and less attention to, the point, to my law to the point where you will totally ignore my law and even hate my law. People hate God's law today. It's under attack, and they're listening. They are so idolatry, idolatry, their minds have become so idolatrous in their thinking that that's the way that they're treating God Almighty and His Word today. Okay, I'm really getting audience participation today, folks, as you can tell. Go ahead and not comment. Not only that, not only that. Not only that. What happens is, is the doctrines start changing the to accommodate doc all these things. The doctrines start changing to accommodate these strangers and like all this stuff. Weeds in your garden. Weeds in your garden. See? Uh, good preaching. <laughs> Amen. 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 And, hey, don't you make mistake think we're not having church. We're having church here. Amen. We are. Amen. So, the kingdom of God requires and even demands that the nation or the national house of Israel brings forth the fruit of the kingdom. We need to, we need to understand that as our calling. I don't care what's going on around you, but this is happening and that's happening. Oh, forget it. We can't do any good. Get your, don't quit. Don't be spiritual babies. Do what you can don't, nobody's saying you have to run for a president, office of president and dictate this or that. You do what you can within your own individual life, within your family, within your community, within this church, etc., to bring forth and to encourage kingdom, the kingdom principles. And stay there. Stand fast in the word. I don't care how much shaky ground, how much people are falling away everywhere else. Stand on the promises of God. Amen? Israel, stand is the message. We will continue with more next, uh, next week, God willing. And uh, let's just uh, close in prayer and add God's blessing upon this word, shall we? 
Lord Jesus, we just come to you now. We do pray for your word. We pray for this message that it will help encourage, speak to the hearts of your people in some way, some form or fashion. We pray this message will be sent out to others, given to others as a witness of your kingdom truth and that they will be encouraged to come back into the fold. They will be encouraged to come back in and stand tall for the kingdom, your kingdom, your promises, and your glory, and your covenant message unto your people Israel. Amen and amen. Yes, and, and Lord Jesus, bless this food that we're going to be partaking of. Amen and amen.